Today we are talking about the 15 to 45 kit lens and whether or not it's even worth getting. Haven't been to the studio in a couple of weeks. Feels good. The real reason I'm here is to figure out what frequencies this uh, this wireless microphone system is set at. Because my brother has a megaphone with a wireless receiver, but he doesn't have a transmitter, and he wanted to see if this would work. What frequency is your wireless receiver? Nope, won't work. Next up is the post office. I gotta check my PO box. It's been super sunny all day, but once I decided to come out and vlog, we got rain clouds. Last week I did a video about the 50mm f1.8 and why I think it's the best secondary lens for the M50. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about, well, kit lenses in general, but why specifically the 15 to 45 kit lens is a great first lens. Again, again I waited until the afternoon to start vlogging and now it's raining again. Well, I guess that's one of the reasons that I have this studio for, you know, in climate weather. Now about kit lenses in general, kit lenses are made to give you a wide focal range. Something where you can sort of test the waters of both wide angle and telephoto shots. It won't be able to do either of those particularly well. What it will do is it'll let you figure out what is your style. Do you like shooting a wide angle or do you like doing tight framing? Now when I started looking into and using DSLR and mirrorless cameras, all of those that had the APS-C size crop sensor used an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And to keep the size and the price down, they all had a variable aperture from 3.5 to 5.6. And that's what Canon had on their original ESM line. But when Canon was coming out with sort of its second generation, instead of doing an 18 to 55 kit lens, they did a 15 to 45. And so we went from the 28 to 85 full frame equivalent to a 24 to 70 full frame equivalent. Now the three millimeters between 18 and 15 millimeters doesn't sound like a lot, but actually this at 18 millimeters definitely gives less of that wide angle feel than the 15 millimeter. When I was using my ESM and EOS M3 with the 18 to 55, I was always sort of craving to have something wide. I always wanted to get that 11 to 22 or maybe adapt over a 10 to 18. But then I got the M50 and started using it at 15 millimeter and that was just wide enough that I have not gotten a wider lens for this camera. 15 millimeter is pretty much the widest you've ever seen on this channel. People have commented all the time, there's no way you're using the 15 millimeter because it looks so wide. And really that's another advantage of this kit lens that it's really tiny and really light. And so I'm able to hold it pretty much fully extended out for me on my Gorilla Pod without getting tired. And then reason number three that this kit lens just works for me is that it has image stabilization. Having all of those things together with the wide 24 millimeter frame stretched out on the Gorilla Pod with IS and maybe even digital IS. Sort of a perfect storm giving this lens an advantage over the older 18 to 55 kit lenses. Now, is this lens going to be the sharpest lens? Absolutely not. The image coming out of it is definitely a lot softer than a more professional lens. In fact, it might even be a little bit soft for a kit lens, but the technical specifications of this lens matter way less to me than whether or not I'm going to be able to do what I need to do with this lens. And if you're wondering if you could do high quality video with a basic, cheap, not very good kit lens, absolutely. In fact, in around the 150 videos that I've been using the M54, I have used the kit lens almost exclusively unless i'm trying to get a really stylized look whenever i'm vlogging whenever i'm shooting b-roll i'm using the 15 to 45 kit lens i have had people scores of time wondering what lens i'm using because this footage just looks so good and then just writing in the comment section 
it's the 15 to 45 kit lens. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't ever upgrade your lens or you never should move beyond the kit lens, but if you're getting the M50, you're probably not trying to go for the highest quality footage. You're trying to get something that you don't have to spend a lot of money on, but can still give you high quality footage. And really, just as the M50 is like almost the ideal camera for that, the kit lens is almost the ideal lens for that. What this camera and this lens basically does is dip your toes into the water enough to decide what is it that you actually want? Using this camera and this lens have allowed me to learn so much more about how to make a video look good more than just shallow depth of field, sharp lenses in 4K. Because if you can't make high quality videos with an M50 and this 15 to 45 kit lens, I don't really think gear is the thing that's holding you back. So if you want my advice, which is worth as much as you're paying for it, if you're just starting out and getting an M50, get the kit lens before you buy any other lens, before you let anyone persuade you into buying something else and figure out what type of videos, what focal ranges you like shooting at, and then start doing the research to figure out what lens you should get next. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you all in the next one.